Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and we have had a packed week here on the show. I've talked about dungeons and commander and ability words and dice rolling, but there's still one more thing I want to talk about today. Adventures in the Forgotten Realms brings us a brand new kind of card. Intrigued? Well, let me tell you all about it. When I think of Dungeons and Dragons, the very first thing I think of is character creation. You select a class, build a character, and begin your quest to level up and find loot. This is a complete cornerstone of the game. Perhaps you want to play a warlock, or a barbarian, or a paladin. This really crafts your gameplay experience. We wanted to bring something similar to magic in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. It truly wouldn't be Dungeons and Dragons if we didn't have classes. And not just creatures with classes, but the ability for you, the hero of the campaign, to pick up a class. At the same time, we wanted to find a way to show something else iconic from D&D, leveling up. There's nothing quite like starting as a lowly level one character picking off kobolds and eventually working your way up to taking on a Draco Lich. Now Magic had a level up mechanic all the way back in Rise of the Eldrazi. It was a real mixed bag. On one hand, it showed creatures leveling up and becoming stronger over time. It felt super cool to level a Knight of Cliffhaven from a 2-2 all the way up to Sarah Angel stats. On the other hand, it had some huge visual challenges. It was difficult for players to parse. Creatures were a hard card type for this in particular because when scanning the board, it wasn't clear what they did or what size they were. And did the card start on level zero or level one anyway? But what about taking that level up mechanic, streamlining it a bit, and trying it somewhere new that wasn't a creature? It was a perfect chocolate meets peanut butter moment. Classes that leveled up. So let me introduce you to a brand new kind of enchantment you'll find in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Classes. Let's take a look at Ranger class as an example. The first thing you'll notice is that saga-like frame, which makes these cards visually distinct. You'll definitely always notice they're on the board and could have an active effect. Oh, and while I'm talking about it, fun Easter egg. Each of the art pieces features the symbol for that class somewhere in the art. Anyway, when you play this card, it starts with its base ability, a level one. In this case, you make a 2-2 friend. But then, as a sorcery, you can pay the mana cost. In this case, one and a green to add its next level. When you do, you gain the ability to add a counter to an attacking creature when you attack. And then, once you're level two, you can pay four mana and level up to level three. You can't skip straight from level one to three. You need to unlock level two first. And the enchantment has whatever effects have been unlocked. So even once you're level three, you still will be able to put a counter on a creature when you attack. Now, sometimes the level will be a one-time triggered ability, like on wizard class here, where when you level up to level two, you draw two cards. Sometimes there'll be static abilities. As you look across the 12 class cards in the set, one for each of the basic player handbook classes, you'll find a mix of abilities. And they're not all monocolored classes either. How about I show off a multicolored class card, introducing fighter class. Fighters need sweet gear to use. So first things first, go find that equipment. Once you level this up to level two, all of your equipment then cost two less to equip. And I'll note that if you're going to equip anyway, this really only costs one mana to use, since two of the mana you would have spent is instantly refunded. And then finally, level three. They're not called fight or for nothing. You can guarantee your awesome equipped creature gets to fight who they want in combat. Now going back to the 12 classes, I'll let you know that these are not perfectly cycled out across colors. We really went for the colors that made the most sense for the classes. There are two in white, one in blue, one in black, one in red, two in green, and then one each in blue-white, blue-black, blue-red, red-green, and this one in red-white, fighter class. You know three of them already, but can you guess which class goes to which color? Take your best try and post your answers below. Well, it has been quite a week of previews, and I really hope all of you enjoy hearing all about them on the show. I'll talk with you again next week when I go even deeper into the Forgotten Realms. 
But in the meantime, may you have a lot of fun finding your class. You got this. Here is Gavin. Here is Delina, Wild Mage. Delina is a red legendary creature elf shaman. You cast her for three in a red. Whenever Delina attacks, you're gonna choose a creature you control and roll a d20. On a one through 14, you get to create a tapped and tapped uh, copy of that creature, except it's not legendary.